Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing the top 10 most shocking twists in the Halloween franchise. As with all ranking lists in my videos, guys, this is just my opinion. Your opinion might be the same, it might be different, but as always, if you're going to be leaving comments down below, then try and keep it civil if you guys are going to be talking to each other about it. And at number 10 is when Michael Myers was broken out of the prison in Halloween 5. Now on this list, not all shocking twists are going to be good shocking twists. And in this case, this was a really bad one. I wasn't expecting it to happen. I know that we got some glimpses of the man in black in Halloween 5, but I didn't think it was going to be this ridiculous to this level. But when we saw Michael Myers just sitting there in a jail cell with his mask still on, and then the, this guy breaks him out, I was like, woof, that is shockingly bad. And at number nine is the Sartain twist in Halloween 2018. Now, Sartain was an interesting character, and I thought he was going to be the next Dr. Loomis, and I was hoping that he would survive Halloween 2018, obviously if there wasn't that twist during the film. The annoying thing about this twist was, it came and went within the exact same scene. It didn't make sense and it didn't matter ultimately. So it's a twist that didn't need to be there, but he was still an interesting character. I was just shocked to see a twist like that. Obviously they tried to portray Sartain as being mentally unstable and wanting to see the effects of Michael and Laurie coming face to face for the first time in 40 years. He was intrigued by that and a little bit too intrigued to the point where he would kill to see that happen. And at number eight is Michael Myers being revealed as the six-year-old killer at the beginning of Halloween 1978. I say this all the time, guys. If you watch Halloween 1 for the first time, not knowing anything about it, and you see someone's point of view walking around the house, killing the babysitter in the house, and then for that person to be revealed as a six-year-old child, not only are they a six-year-old child, they are the brother of the girl that they've just killed. That's a shocking moment because you don't expect to see something like that. Obviously, if you know the movie and the plot, you know that it's going to be Michael. But if you know nothing about it and you're just watching it randomly, you'd be, be like, oof, that's shocking. And at number seven is the reveal that Michael and Laurie are brother and sister in Halloween 2. Obviously, they had to fabricate something in the story for Halloween 2 in order for Michael Myers to come back again and go after Laurie Strode. It, they felt at the time that it wasn't enough for Michael to come after the same person again for no apparent reason. And that makes sense. There's no reason for a, someone like Michael Myers to go after the same person over and over again if they don't really have a motive. But they had to give him a motive in it. And why not make him related to Laurie Strode? At the time, it was shocking. Now it's not so shocking because they're brother and sister, they're not brother and sister in different timelines. But at the time, yeah, it was pretty shocking. And at number six is the beginning of Halloween Ends where Jeremy dies. In films, not just the Halloween franchise, but a lot of films, you don't really see a child being killed. And although Jeremy isn't intentionally killed by an adult, he accidentally dies in one of the most brutal fashions I've ever seen on screen. Of course, you kind of see it off screen, but you see enough to know exactly what happened to Jeremy. And it was a shocking moment for me. And it was definitely a twist because I didn't know that was going to happen. I know that Jamie Lee Curtis did mention that the beginning of Halloween Ends will leave a lasting impression for parents. But to what extent? I had no idea until I saw it happen. And at number five is when we find out that Ellie is an android at the end of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Now, I don't think they make it clear and they probably have to go back and watch it. I don't think they make it clear if she was an android from the very beginning or they turned, not turned her into an android, but made an android out of her halfway through the film or not. They don't really make that clear. Whether they do or not, and whether I remember or not, it was still a shocking twist because we expected her to be still human at the end of the film. Her and Chalice trying to save the day and then to find out that she is an actual android. I was like, oh, I remember first watching and thinking, this is a bad film and I'm so confused and this just makes it worse. Obviously, time has been kind to Season of the Witch because more people appreciate it now. It's become a cult classic. And when I watch it, it still feels like a shocking twist because I'm, I, I genuinely forget sometimes that that happens at the end of the film. So yeah, it's a welcome twist. And then number four is when Laurie is killed within the first 10 minutes of Halloween Resurrection. Now, I kind of seen it coming because... 
where else can you go with Laurie's character after the events of Halloween H2? But it was still shocking to see it and there was definitely no honour done in her character. We know why Jamie Lee Curtis came back. She wanted that paycheck. I think she was paid like $5 million for the 10 minutes that she was in. So she would probably come back for anything if it means that she was going to get paid. She's similar to... John Carpenter, but it was still shocking in the sense that I was like, why? Why would you do that? Why would Jamie Lee Curtis agree to that? Why would the filmmakers want to do something like that? And why would they do it in the manner that they did? If it happened at the end of Resurrection, I think I would have accepted it more, but still been angry. But the fact that they'd done it in the first 10 minutes, killed her off, and then they gave us what they gave us for Hall the rest of the film... I was like, what? And number three is the ending of Halloween from 1978. When I first watched this movie, I wasn't sure what type of person Michael Myers was. Was he a human being? Was he supernatural? The great thing about Halloween is they never reveal that. We we'll just assume he's a man who with supernatural abilities. And that's exactly how John Carpenter explains him. So when we see the end of the film, when Dr. Loomis shoots him out the window and he go looks down to check on him, He's gone. And that was a shocking moment for me when I first watched it because I'm like, where did they go? Obviously, I'm young and naive, but I'm like, where did Michael Myers go? Is he more than just a human being? Because throughout the film, I'm expecting him just to be this human being. And I'm like, how's he getting up from these bullet wounds? How's he getting up from the stabs? And then when the, the, the end of the film comes, because it leaves it ambiguous, that was a shocking twist, and it was the first of its kind, of course, in the Halloween franchise. And then number two is when Jamie Lloyd mimics young Michael Myers' killing from the original Halloween 1 at the end of Halloween 4. Now, obviously, we've seen it happen before with Michael Myers doing it at the beginning of Halloween 1, which was shocking enough to be on this list. But the fact that they replicated that and done it again with Jamie Lloyd, I wasn't expecting that to happen. However, when it did happen at the end of Halloween 4, I thought that makes sense because evil comes full circle. He's related to Jamie Lloyd. She's so she's young as well, not as young as six years old, but she's still a young child. And then it's happened again. And the point of view that it happens is obviously similar to the original movie. And I thought, wow, they've done it again. And then number one is the end of Halloween H20, where Michael Myers gets his head chopped off at the end. I wasn't expecting that to happen. When I knew, when I found out there was another Halloween film coming out, I thought, okay, they're going to fight Michael Myers, people are going to die, Michael Myers is going to disappear, and then we'll get sequels. Now, although we did get sequels that were badly made with Halloween Resurrection, I didn't expect Michael Myers to die in Halloween H2O. And believe it or not, guys, he did die in Halloween H2O until it made a lot of money. And then they thought, let's bring him back. But at the end of Halloween H2 when he gets his head chopped off, I didn't see that coming at all. And I know that Jamie Lee Curtis marketed this movie as the triumphant end to Michael and Laurie. And I thought, you're just saying that he's going to survive and there's going to be sequels and blah, blah, blah. I didn't expect her to be telling the truth at that point because when his head get chopped off, I was like, ah, there's no coming back from that, Michael. So that's my top 10 shocking twists in the Halloween franchise, guys. What's your top 10 shocking twists? And again, if you can't name 10, just give me one or two. Leave your comments down below and we can discuss those. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you soon. Meeting adjourned. I'll be right back. What are you waiting for, huh? I'm coming to get you, Barbara. Ever played in the past.